respected brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim sallallahu alayka ya rasulallah sallallahu alayka wa ala ahli baytika almadhlumin sallallahu alayka ya aba abdillah sallallahu alayka ya ibn rasulillah ya rahmatullahi alwasi'a ويا باب نجاة الأمة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما الله صل على محمد قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انا اعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر ان شانئك هو الابتر امنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم الله صل على محمد الحمد لله رب العالمين we thank Allah the almighty for giving us this opportunity to meet in honor of the second imam hasan al mujtaba salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi allahumma salli ala muhammad when we discuss about the second imam we see that there are many verses in the holy quran which talk about him as well as many narrations inshallah in this series where we are going to discuss about the life and times of imam al hasan alayhi salam we will explore some of the verses from the holy quran narrations from the holy prophet and his life and challenges which he faced when he lived in this world today we want to look at number 1 surah al kawthar i'm sure every one of us we know surah al kawthar and we have memorized surah al kawthar which is good thing However reflection on the surah is very important knowing sabab and sha'an of nuzul why the surah was revealed is utmost important now when we look at surah al kawthar first of all we come to know that it is the shortest surah in the holy quran shortest surah that when allah says la in ijtama'atil jinnu wal insu ala an ya'tu bi mithli hadha al qur'an la ya'tuna bi mithlihi if jinn and mankind would gather together to bring example of the holy quran they wouldn't manage to do so it is as if when we read surah al kawthar allah says allah says even if it is surah al kawthar you will not be able to bring example of it However when we look at the history we see people who tried to copy example of the holy quran and to say that yes we have brought the challenge so see this is our quran there was a particular individual an evil man by the name musailama he was titled as al kadhab the liar Musailama al-Kadhab challenged Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. He said, "O oh Muhammad, you are a messenger. I am too a messenger." Rasulullah challenged him. 
One of the challenges said, okay, if you are a messenger, bring something like Quran. He said, yes, I can bring something like Quran. So he said, okay, Jazakallah. What can you bring? He said, I can bring Surah like Al Kawthar, which we have recited here. So he said, okay, bring it, present it to us. He said, yeah. Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar, fa salli li rabbika wanhar, inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. I have my own surah as well. My surah is known as Surah al-Jawahir. What's the surah? He says, Inna a'at, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna a'atayna kal jawahir, fa salli li rabbika wajahir. وَلَا تَسْتَمِعِ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِ سَاهِرِ He said, this is my surah. Another, he said, I have another one also. الْفِيلِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْفِيلِ لَهُ خُرْتُومٌ طَوِيلٌ وَذَيْلٌ قَصِيرٌ For Arabs, they understand easily. Let's look at the first so-called surah which he brought. He says, إِنَّا أَعْتَوِنَاكَ الْجَوَاهِرِ Indeed, we have given you Jawahir. Jawahir, plural of Jawhar, you can say jewel or an ornament. So we have given you jewels. Fasalli li rabbika, pray to, to your Lord. Wajahir, and recite loudly. Wala tastami, do not listen. Ila kauli sahir, to the word of magicians. So when this was brought, the question was, Musaylama, you started with Bismillah. Allah started with Bismillah. You started with Bismillah. Said, ah, but this is my surah. Today's language, he copied and pasted. So he didn't bring something new. Oh, plagiarism, if you want to call it. Yeah. Bismillah rahman rahim it is Quran. He came with Bismillah. Inna a'atoyna kal jawahir. We have given you jawahir. Where are the jawahir? Where are the jewels which you have given? Who are you talking to, O Musaylam? I said, I'm talking to the messenger. Who is your messenger? When Allah says, Inna a'atoyna kal kawthar, He says, Inna, indeed we, a'atoyna ka, we have given you. You here means Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Allah says we have given you, Ya Rasulullah, Al-Kawthar. Al-Kawthar has got many meanings. Al-Kawthar means many blessings. Al-Kawthar means a river in Jannah. The river which only the Mu'minin will drink from it. The quencher of the thirsty of those believers is Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Inna a'atoyna kal kawthar. But the other meaning which is connected with our topic tonight, we have given you Fatimatu Zahra, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayya. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So Rasulullah, we have given you this. Musaylam al-Kadhab, when you say, Inna a'atoyna ka, we have given you. Who have you given? And if it is you, are you a Lord, Allah? And where is your messenger? When you weigh the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will never compare to the words of human being like Musaylama, the liar, al kadhab And that's why up to today, no any human being or jinn has managed to produce example of the Holy Quran, short surah like Surah al kawthar Because the meaning is deep. Not only you can bring the words which rhyme like Surah al kawthar but what are the meanings which are in the wordings? So in Na'atu in al kawthar we keep aside the whatever claim of Musaylam al kadhab like the second surah which he brought, he said, Al-Fil, Malfil, the elephant. What will make you to know the elephant? The elephant has got a long trunk and short tail. What does it mean? It doesn't have any meaning it, when you compare the wordings of the Holy Quran to your wordings. But Surah Al-Kawthar has got deeper meanings. 
When we look at inna a'tainaka al-kawthar, we have given you kawthar, faswalli, pray, li rabbika, to your Lord. Allah didn't say faswalli lillahi. Have you thought about it? He didn't say faswalli lillah. He said faswalli li rabbika. The difference between Allah and Rabb in terms of titles and names, Allah is the one according to Imam Sajjad Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Allah. 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 Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says when he was asked about Allah, who is this Allah? How can we know Allah? When he was talking to someone and he wanted him to understand easily, he said, have you traveled? on a journey like the narration of the six imam where you found yourself in deep trouble and there was no anyone there to help you there was no any rescue no any help you saw that you are going to perish and you are depending on a power to help you that one which you are depending on that is allah the almighty now, Allah says, Fasolli li rabbika. Rab is the nourisher. Rab is the cherisher. Rab, Lord, we say, is the one who took care of you and me before we were born. When we were in our mother's wombs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared that mother for us. When we were there, the mother didn't have anything to worry his mission was just, her mission was just you. It is Rabb, Allah, who did that. Fasolli li rabbika. Pray to you, our Lord, the cherisher, the nourisher, the one who took care of you. He's still taking care of you, and he will continue to take care of you. Fasolli li rabbik. One har. One har. In Arabic language, we have something which is known as nahira. And we have another one which is known as Dhabiha. When we slaughter animals, we do Dhabih, Dhabiha. But when we do Nahar, is only for the camel. You can't slaughter the, the camel, but you do Nahar. Allah says, Faswalli li rabbika wanhar. Pray to your Lord and give, we say give sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? The sacrifice of the amount of camel. Not just goat and sheep. Swalli li rabbika wanhar. Pray to your Lord and give sacrifice of the camel. Because the camel we do nahira. Inna shani akahu al abtar. Indeed, you are enemy. Shani aka. The one who wants to challenge you. Hu al abtar. He is the one who is without posterity, without family. There was a particular individual by the name Aswi bin Wa'il. He used to challenge Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. His challenge was a very, we call it foul challenge. Every time he meets with the Holy Prophet, he calls him Abtar. Wallah, if it was you and me, we would do something bad to him. Every time he meets with Rasulullah Abtar, he calls him Abtar, Abtar, Abtar. But the Holy Prophet was so calm and composed, he didn't cause any trouble to him. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the surah by saying, Inna shani aka huwa al Abtar. You are not Abtar, Ya Rasulullah. Your father Abdullah is known. His father Abdul Muttalib is known. Hashim, the, the, all the family members of this clan, Bani Hashim, are known. It is him who is not known. In front of people, people know him as Aswi bin Wa'il, Aswi son of Wa'il. But in its reality, Aswi is not the son of Wa'il. When the Holy Quran came down and revealed this particular individual, he went to his mother. And he said, Mother, Quran has come to challenge me. That my, this father I know is not mine. Can you tell me? And he had a sword. He said, otherwise I'm going to kill you. The mother said, are you ready? Yeah, I will tell you. There were five men I used to go with. 
until I became pregnant. And I didn't know which one was the father. So I looked around and I said, Wa'il is strong and courageous. I named you after him. He said, oh, this is the story, yes. People say, don't mess with Rasulullah. When you mess up with Rasulullah, Allah will take care of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. The enemy, your enemy is the one who is without posterity, but Rasulullah, not you are not. Now, when we look at Rasulullah, we come to know that, yes, he had boys. He had sons. He is known as Abu Qasim because he had a son by the name Qasim. He had Abdullah. Abdullah passed away. He had Ibrahim. They passed away. Three boys passed away. Rasulullah didn't have any boy to inherit him according to the Arabic culture and our cultures as well. So he said, Rasulullah, every family continues through the sons, but my family will continue through Fatima to Zahra and Ali bin Abi Talib, alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now the second Imam comes here. When we talk about inna a'toynaka al-kawthar, we come to know that kawthar not only is zahra. Kawthar are not only many blessings which Rasulullah has been given. Kawthar is not only the river in paradise. Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba wal Hussein al-Shaheed wa Ali Zain al-Abidin wal Baqir wal Sadiq wal Kadhim wal Ridha wal Jawad wal Hadi wal Askari wal Hujjat al-Qaim al-Mahdi all of them are part of kawthar. Inna a'toynakal kawthar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa al-Hammad. Now, Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba, Abu Muhammad, as he is known, when he was born, you can imagine how happy Rasulullah was. He came and he said, give me my baby. He was given him. And he raised him. You can imagine the grandfathers here, you know, when you carried your, your grandson or your granddaughter, how happy you are. Now remember Rasulullah, who was called as Abtar, is carrying Imam Hassan alayhi salam, and he started reciting the Adhan. Adhan of Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Iqama, Qad Qamat is Salah. And then Dua. And then, of course, he carried him out. He was so happy. Because why? The title Abtar now is no longer there. Then, of course, the seventh day he shaved the head of Imam Hassan, did Aqiqa, brought people for them to share the blessings together. He was so happy to see Imam Hassan al Mujtaba, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Now, some narrations say that Amirul Mu'mineen, when he was asked by Rasulullah, which name have you given him? Some say that he said, I have given him the name Jafar. Rasulullah said, no, no, no. This one will be Hassan. But according to some scholars who have done research on the life of Imam Amirul Mu'mineen, they say, no, Amirul Mu'mineen did not give the name to Imam Hassan because why? He was waited for Rasulullah to come for him to name his grandson. He said, how can I give him a name without you? And Rasulullah came and he said, this one will be Hassan. Some historians say, two names, Al-Hassan wal Hussein. The first people to be given these two names were Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. There was no any Hassan in Medina before Imam Hassan. There was no any Hussein in Medina before Imam Hussein. Of course, there are other scholars who say, no, these names were there. And Imam Hassan and Hussein were given the names which were famous. But however, Rasulullah chose the name Hassan. Hassan, you can say the one who is handsome. When you look at him, you will be captured by the way you see him. Al-Hassan wal Hussein are known as Al-Hassanan, two Hassans. Subhanallah, the title is so good that in our madhab, we have, for example, Salatul Dhuhr and Asr, what do we call it? Dhuhran or Dhuhrain. And you have Salatul Maghrib wal Isha, Maghribain. So you have Hassanain, 
and so on and so forth. Beautiful names. And it is important for you and me when we talk about Imam Hassan alayhi salam to make sure we give good names to our children. It's very important. Especially when you name your children the names of Anbiya and the names of Aimma al athar alayhi salam, the name suits the person. It is important for us to look at good names, not to give just any names. Like, of course, people of Iraq know there was their leader who was so tyrant by the name Saddam. Yeah. When you look at Arabic language, the meaning of Saddam is something which when you eat, it gives sound. Yeah. It's the one who pounds. So, and you, you could see how he pounded the people of Iraq because of the name. We need to be very careful with the names. Rasulullah, not only he loved Imam Hassan alayhi salam, but also he cared for him. He lived with him for seven years. These seven years, Imam Hassan was born in the third AH. Rasulullah died in the year 11 AH. For seven years, Rasulullah was so keen with tarbiyah of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. And of course, later on, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Rasulullah, not only he cared for their tarbiyah, but also he showed openly to people that he cared for Imam Hassan and Hussein alayhi salam. Many a time when he was carrying them, he used to kiss the one on the right and the other one on the left. And one Arabi came and he said, he became a Muslim, we men don't do this. Rasulullah said, what you don't do, you men? He said, we don't kiss our children. Rasulullah said, no, we do kiss our children. And sometimes, yes, we have this issue. Within our communities, still, we have people who think that kissing is a business of husband and wife only. You can't kiss your children. No, 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 no. Rasulullah said, we do that. We kiss our children to show their love towards them. Not only Rasulullah showed with the example, there were many times when Rasulullah was on his mimbar sitting, giving lecture. It's a serious business. Jibrail comes, he gives sermon, talks to people. Children, when they come, even in our majalis, sometimes you can see, when children come, some of us, we, we become very sensitive. No, you have to remove them. Rasulullah, no, he carried them. He carries Imam Hassan and Hussein alayhi salam. He showed to people that I care about them. In sujood, he prolonged his sajda because of them. Not only they were just children, Rasulullah wanted to say that there is something special with my sons, Al Hassan and Al Hussein alayhi salam. And that's why, not only that he called them my ahfad, my grandsons, but also he called them abnai my children like in in the holy quran as well in the event of muba'ala we see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says faman hajjaka fihi min ba'di ma ja'aka min al-ilmi faqul ta'alaw nad'u abna'ana abna abna'ana not only ahfadana faqul ta'alaw nad'u abna'ana wa abna'akum wa nisa'ana wa nisa'akum wa anfusana wa anfusakum thumma nabtahil they were abna of Rasulullah. Whenever there is a danger, a man, always the head of family, will keep his children away from the danger. And it is a logic to do so. Rasulullah, there was a danger for Islam and him to be destroyed on the event or in the event of Mubahala, but he brings his children. He says, yes, if there is anything, I will start with my children. And of course, the daughter and Amirul Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam in the event of Mubahala. When we look at this, then we come to know that the position of Al Imam Al Hassan Wal Hussein alayhi salam in the eyes of the Holy Prophet, their position was so high. Now, when we look at the life of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, we come to know he also learned a lot from Rasulullah Muhammad. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد For the brothers and sisters who come from East Africa especially Kenya and Tanzania Zanzibar if you have lived there every Fajr Salah 
Ahlu Sunnah, we are not talking about Wahhabis. Ahlu Sunnah from the Madhab of Shafi'i. Every Fajr Salah, they do Qunut in their Salah. We do Qunut before Ruku. They do Qunut after Ruku. The Qunut for Fajr they recite every day is Allahumma hadini fi man hadait. Wa'afini fi man afait. Wa tawallani fi man tawallait. When you ask them, where did you get this kunut, most of people don't know. When you look at the life of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, he says, I have learned from my grandfather Rasulullah many types of dua, including this dua. Dua of kunut. What does it say? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, Allahumma hadini fi man hadait. O oh Allah, guide me amongst those people whom you have guided. Ihdini, give me hidayah. Allahumma hadini fi man hadait. Wa'afini fi man afait. Whomsoever you have given them good health, make me to be among them. Wa'afini fi man afait. Watawallani fi man tawallait. Whomsoever you have given him chance to rule this world, to live happily, make me to be among them. Watawallani fi man tawallait. Waqini sharra ma qadait. Any shar which you have decreed to meet people, I ask you, Ya Allah, to protect me from that shar. Waqini sharri ma qadait. Fa innaka taqudhi. Wala yukda alayk. You decree, you judge, you make decisions, but no one can judge you, can make decisions for you until the end of dua. So beautiful. You reflect and you come to know that there is no any way where you can live without depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Hassan al Mujtaba is teaching us. Aimma al athar alayhi musalam, all of them. When they discuss anything which is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see deep thinking in whatever they say. Every day, imagine, you say, Allahumma hadini fi man hadait, and you ponder on it. It means that your day starts when you say, Ya Allah, I don't have anyone to take care for me or to take care of me except you. And I ask you to be the way I want you to be, be my Lord. These are A'imma al-Athar alayhi musalam. When we look at Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba alayhi salam, he lived with Amir al -Mu'mineen, of course with his mother also for that period of the time when Rasulullah passed away in the month of Safar. Sayyid al-Zahra passed away in the same year. So he, he didn't live with the mother longer that, than what was expected because of the event of the door, as we understand. However, he lived with Amirul Mu'mineen. Ali alayhi salam died in the year 40 AH. With Imam Hassan alayhi salam, he lived with him for 37 years. Now, 37 years with Amirul Mu'mineen. You can imagine that uh, maybe Ali alayhi salam with, with his children, he would be very soft in his approach to his children. But Ali was not like that. The battle of Jamal came, Imam Hassan was there. Battle of Jamal, where people were killed, Imam Hassan was there. Battle of Sifin, Imam Hassan is there, of course with his old brothers. The battle of Nahrawan, Imam Hassan is there. The battle of either Sifin or Jamal, Amir al talks to Imam Hassan. He says, my son, when you face the enemies, this is the way I want you to face them. Stand firm, number one. Put your feet firm on the ground. Before you start fighting, make sure you, you are Jumjuma, you are skeleton, you give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means that you stand there ready, whatever happens, you are already there to give whatever you have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, never run away from the enemy. 
Never give your back. Don't show your back to the enemies. Face the enemy face to face. This is Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And as we are going to talk tomorrow about the personality of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, there is a misconception which we need to correct. Sometimes when we talk about Imam Hussein alayhi salam, we see as if he was so brave, a hero who stood in Karbala. Yes, he was. With Imam Hassan, we, we think that no, he was a kind of softy person. No, that is not the real picture of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. However, Imam Hassan was very kind. Imam Hassan was very hospitable. Imam Hassan alayhi salam, when you meet with him, people say that you will be captured by the way he wears nice clothing. He appears in a way that you look at him, you say, wow, th this is the man I want to be closer to because of his appearance, especially with the youth. This is Imam Hassan. But when it comes to the battle, no, he was there to defend Islam properly. And these are our A'imma alayhi musalam, all of them. When sometimes we talk about our A'imma alayhi musalam, we, th we think these were people, even they couldn't, they couldn't ride a horse. But no, they were more than that. They were soldiers. They were ready to fight for Islam, not only through academic approach, but also physical approach. A'imma al Atar alayhi musalam wa like that. However, when it comes to the time of prayers, they were melt with the wordings of Salah. Imam Hassan was like that. And Imam Hassan alayhi salam in his dua, in his munajat, let me read one of the munajat, then you can see what kind of deep thinking he used to, to use whenever he used to recite this munajat. It has been narrated. This munajat by Sheikh Jawad Al Qayyumi in the book by the name Sahifatul Hassan. You have Sahifatul Sajjadiya, there is another Sahifatul Hassan. Long dua Sahifa. Imam Hassan alayhi salam says, Allahumma, salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma inna kal khalafu min jami'i khalqik. O oh Allah, you are the one who will remain alone after all of your creation will perish. When you read Surah Ar-Rahman, then you see these words. You see these words. What's the wordings? Kullu man alayha fan wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. Imam Hassan alayhi salam says, Allahumma inna kal khalaf. You are the only one who will remain. Min jami'i khalqik. After all your creations will perish. Wa laysa min khalqika khalfun minka. No one will remain after you. Ilahi man ahsana fa bi rahmatik. O my Lord, whomsoever, whomever, who, Whomsoever has done good, fabi rahmatik. It is only because of your rahma. Remember the dua of Kunut, sometimes we read, huh? Ilahi amilna bifadlik, wala tu amilna biadlika ya karim. Whomsoever has done well in this dunya, fabi rahmatik. It's because of your mercy, rahma. Waman asa'a. And whomsoever has done wrong in this world, fabi khatwi'atihi. It is not your khatwi'ah, it is his khatwi'ah. It is on, his only, his own mistakes. It's not your mistake, ya Allah. Anyone who has gone wrong, it is his own mistake, not your mistake, ya Allah. Here there is an aqidah which we need to correct. I remember when we used to live in Africa, clearly. I remember even my mother used to say this. Amejaaliwa. Yeah, in Swahili language they say, Amejaaliwa. Kujaaliwa means what? Allah has decided for him to be the way he is. So if someone drinks alcohol, you ask why? You say, ah, Amejaaliwa. Allah is the one who made him to be like that. Why does he pray? Amejaaliwa. He prays because Allah has decided for him. Allah, 
how can this kujaliwa jaliwa is for positive and negative imam hasan alayhi salam say no ilahi man ahsana fa bi rahmatik wa man asaa fa bi khati'atihi anyone who has done good he's doing good in this world he is a mu'min is because of your rahma and if he has done wrong he becomes like yazid la'natullah alayh this is his khati'a his his own mistake you allah you didn't do you didn't force anyone to become like that and that's why our madhhab is known as madhhabul adliya from the word adala allah is adil allah does not commit any injustice whatever bad we do it is we choose to go that way and not allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unfortunately this aqida muawiya alayhi ma alayhi muawiya made people to believe that if you commit sin in this world it is allah astaghfirullah and that's why he said to people well don't 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 fight against me i came to power because allah made me to be your leader so be obey me listen to me and people were listening to him imam hasan alayhi salam says no ilahi man ahsana fa bi rahmatik wa man asaa fa bi khati'ati and then he continues to say allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad warzuqni al ikhlas wa fi amali urzuqni al ikhlas wa fi amali ya allah i ask you to bestow upon me ikhlas sincerity fi amali in my deeds and my actions whatever i do i want to have i, I want it to be with ikhlas very important sometimes wallah ikhlas is is a challenge especially with waswas of shaitan especially with young yeah young audience you are here sometimes yes maybe your level of understanding is not but allah will guide you insha allah you want to pray you say i want to pray because my dad if i don't pray my dad my dad yeah you pray for your dad no you pray for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes you have to pray to obey your dad however when we we do our deeds and actions not only for children even this age sometimes if people do not praise us for what we do we don't want to continue to do whatever we want to do there's no ikhlas there how come i give charity i go to husaini imam barga masjid i do a lot of work but people don't appreciate how many times yes we become rage i won't go do it again they don't appreciate whatever i do no if you do for the sake of allah your ikhlas will make you to continue to do what you do time and again whether people praise you or they don't praise you and that's why imam hasan hussein ali alayhi salam fatima tu zahra alayhi salam in surah ad dahar allah says clearly wa yut'imuna at-ta'ama 'ala hubbihi miskinan wa yatiman wa asira inma nut'imukum liwajhi llah liwajhi la nuridu minkum jaza'an wala shukura whether you thank us you don't thank us we don't care because we don't do it for you we do it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why imam hasan say warzuqni al ikhlas fi amali whatever deed i do any ibada i do ya allah i ask you to give me that ikhlas very important to allah wasa'ata fi rizqi sa'a fi rizqi make my risk to be plenty sa'ata fi rizqi imam zain al abidin ali ibn al husain sajjad alayhi salam allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad He says a rizq maqsum from narration from Rasulullah rizq maqsum your rizq is already divided oh allah has decreed it allah has given you your rizq if you want to run away from your rizq your rizq will run after you now imam imam hasan alayhi salam says here wa sa'ata fi rizqi ya allah if you have decreed my rizq to be the way it is I ask you to make it more sa'ata fi rizq Allahumma ij'al khayra umri akhirah Ya Allah my life which I live in this world 
the best of it, I ask you to make it the, at the end of it. The end of my life, make it to be the best end. Ij'al khayra umri akhira. I may make mistakes when I'm young. Maybe I made mistakes when I was a teenager. Maybe now. But before I die, Ya Allah, make that time to be the best time. Wa khayra amali khawatima. The best of my amali, my ibadah, acts of worship. Khawatima, the end should be better, Ya Allah. And then he says, Wa khayra ayami khayra the best day for me, I ask you, Ya Allah, to make, it, to make the, best, the best of my days is the day when I will meet with you. Ya Allah. He says that is the best day. I want you to make the best day is the day when I'm going to meet with you, Ya Rabbal Alameen. This is Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Now look at the munajat, and there are many munajat. This scholar has, has written a book of all these munajat and adi'ya, which we need to explore, we need to visit them, we need to read them in order for us to understand the personality of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Insha'Allah we'll continue tomorrow. However, when you look at the life of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, most of the time we say Imam Hussein is madhulum. Indeed, Imam Hussein is madhulum. But Imam Hassan alayhi salam also was madhulum. You ask the question, really, when we go for Umrah and then you go to visit Rasulullah, logic tells you this is the grandfather of Imam Hassan. If I see the grave of Rasulullah, at least I would see the grave of Fatima to Zahra. Okay, Fatima to Zahra is not buried there. Where is Imam Hassan? Why is Ma Imam Hassan not buried near Rasulullah? Imam Hassan is madhulum. But this dhulm did not start just when Imam Hassan passed away. When Amirul Mu'mineen passed away, Imam Hassan became the Amir of Mu'mineen, the Khalifa, the Imam of the time. It was a difficult moment for him to rule people because facade, corruption, prevail all over the places which were known as Muslim lands. The situation was so bad that Imam Hassan alayhi salam organized his soldiers to fight against Muawiyah. The soldiers of Imam Hassan, some of them were the companions of Amirul Mu'mineen, were bought by Muawiyah. They were given money and they left the Imam of their time Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Not only that, there was a moment scholars say the, the affairs reached to the point that someone came to grab the clothing of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Grab the clothing of Imam Hassan? Not only that, they injured Imam Hassan when he did not want to sign the peace treaty with Muawiyah. There was one occasion when Imam Hassan alayhi salam put his musalla, ja namaz, for him to pray there. Some people came and they pulled, they pulled the ja namaz, the musalla, beneath the feet of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. This is farzanda of Rasulullah. But no, the one who gave the bad moment to Imam Hassan was that woman Ja'ada. Bintil Ash'ath, the one who gave the poison to Imam Abi Muhammad al Hassan when he was there to have his iftar. Instead of enjoying the iftar, Imam Hassan ate the poison. And then Imam Hassan was in very critical moment. Imam Hussein came to look at his brother. He saw him vomiting blood. Imam, Has Imam Hussein started crying. Imam Hassan said, Oh Hussein, close the door. I don't want your cry to be heard. 
We ask Imam Hassan by who he said by our sister Zainab. I don't want my sister Zainab to know what is happening here. Hussein continued to cry. Imam Hassan said, O oh Abba Abdullah, La yawm ka yawm ka ya Abba Abdullah. O oh Hussein, you are crying for me. But let me tell you your day. There will be no any other day like your day. Your day will be a difficult day. We ask, oh Hassan, how did you know that? Of course he tells us, I learned this from my father and my grandfather Rasulullah. The moment came when Imam, Hus Imam Hassan died as a shaheed. Hussein wanted to bury Imam Hassan near the grave of his grandfather, but he was stopped to do that. O Dhulm, O Dhalima, Dhalima, O Injustice, he had to be buried in Jannatil Baqi. ألا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. We pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى يا الله ببركة الحسن المجتبى اجعلنا زيارته في الدنيا. يا الله بستو upon us the ziyar of Imam Hassan in this world and his shafa in akhirah. Ya Allah bi barakatil hasan il wajih We ask you Ya Allah to cure all the marid Ya Allah we ask you Allahumma shafi kulla marid Ya Allah our marhumin We ask you to make them enter into your masi bi barakatil hasan il mujtaba Ya Allah we ask you to accept this majlis And to reward the organizers And for our marhumin and marhumin of all mu'minin and mu'minat Let us recite suratul mubarakatul fatiha ma'as salawat